Matt O'Connor with the O'Connor Law Firm in Kansas City, Missouri. I've been a practicing attorney for 20 years with an emphasis in criminal defense and litigation, including civil litigation. Today I want to talk to you about when and why you invoke your Miranda rights. And you've probably all heard of your Miranda rights, and earlier I discussed with you what has to occur in order for your Miranda rights to attach. What that means is when, when does Miranda um, become constitutionally required? And, and real briefly to review that, that is you have to be in custody or arrest-like constraints, which means you feel like you can't leave. And number two, you have to be questioned or interrogated. Custody and interrogation. So in other words, if you're arrested and they don't ask any questions, they don't have to give you Miranda rights. Okay, those two things have to be in place. Now, why would you invoke your Miranda rights? You're saying to yourself, hey, if I'm innocent, I don't have anything to hide. I want to tell them. I'm going to say I wasn't um, at the scene of the robbery, or I couldn't have been at a specific location, or I didn't embezzle this money, or I wasn't involved in this drug transaction. I was at a certain location. Here's why. Because even if they record that interrogation completely through video or audio or otherwise, the questions they ask you are not geared towards determining an objective set of circumstances and facts. They're there to get you to make incriminating statements or to set you up for cross-examination at trial. See, here's what happens. If you make a statement, for example, let's say it's a, a drug transaction, and they say to you on January 13, 2012, were you at 4900 Main? And you say, no, that's impossible. I remember I was at my cousin Fred's house, and I have an alibi for that date, and you can check. Let's say you're wrong. Um, then if you testify, your statement can come into evidence, which means that they can impeach you. So in other words, when you're testifying, hey, I didn't do anything, they're going to be able to use your statement that you at your cousin Fred's house against you. So again, a good example of why you would not want to uh, give a statement and why you would want to invoke the Miranda rights. Well, how do you do that? The simplest way is to say nothing. The best way is probably to ask for your attorney. And the way you do that is very politely and directly indicate that you are requesting your right to counsel and that you have no statements to make. That's the thing to do. Let me repeat it to you. I'm requesting my right to counsel and I have no statements to make. I'm invoking my Miranda rights. That's what you want to say. And, and resist the temptation that all of us may have to want to be cooperative with the police who are investigating it and, and, and give them information because it may be to your detriment. And that's why you invoke your Miranda rights.